As always, if you haven't tried the question on your own first, please pause the video and do so now. In order to determine the light intensity for which P is a maximum, we're going to have to calculate the derivative of this equation. And we'll notice that the equation involves a quotient. And so to take the derivative, we're going to have to use, of course, the quotient rule. Now here is the quotient rule from an earlier chapter. It's using prime notation, and in order to understand how this works, we would want to assume that the numerator can be considered our f function, and the denominator can be considered the g function. So with those designations, we can carry on and apply the quotient rule to calculate the derivative. So the derivative will be p prime is equal to g, which is the bottom function, multiplied by the derivative of f, which is the derivative of the top function. Now the derivative of 100i would just be 100. And then we have a minus the f function, which is the top function again, multiplied by g prime, which is the derivative of the bottom. Now the derivative of the bottom would just be 2i plus one. Notice the derivative of this i term is just one. And then finishing off the quotient rule, we have this all divided by the bottom function squared. Now we can simplify the numerator by distributing the 100 into all three terms of the parentheses. We can also distribute this 100i into the parentheses on the right. Then we need to distribute the minus sign into the parentheses as well. Now in the numerator, we'll notice that we have a positive 100i term as well as a negative 100i term. So those two terms will cancel out. In addition, we can combine the negative 200i squared with the positive 100i squared to make an overall negative 100i squared. Now it won't be necessary to foil out the bottom. We can leave the derivative in this form. Now in order to proceed in optimizing this equation, we need to set the derivative equal to zero. We could multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator of our fraction so that it will cancel out on the left side. On the right side, we have zero times that denominator, so that's going to be zero, of course. And so we're left with this equation here. To solve for i, we can subtract 400 from both sides of the equation. We'll then divide both sides by negative 100. And then finally take the square root of both sides, and that's going to allow us to see that the i is equal to 2. Of course, technically when we square root 4, we get both plus or minus 2, but in the context of this question, we can safely disregard the minus answer because the light intensity presumably can only be a positive quantity. So the only solution for i will, will be positive 2. Now we still need to confirm that this value for i indeed maximizes the value of p. And to do that, we can turn to the first derivative test. And in the first derivative test, we set our critical value for i, which was two, at the center of a number line. We will choose values for i that are both smaller than and larger than our critical value, and we will plug them into the first derivative to see whether they come out positive or negative. For example, when we calculate p prime of one, we would see that we get a positive result. And what that means is that the p function is increasing all the way up to two. We can draw a little line that's increasing to indicate that result. P prime of three, on the other hand, would turn out to be a negative value, and that means that the P function would be decreasing beyond the value of I equals two. So right at I equals two, we can see from this little sketch that we would indeed attain a maximum value for P. So this test confirms that at I equals two, P is indeed maximized. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos just like it. You are also welcome to send in your own questions.